Shares of Robin Hood, Robin Hood up close to 30 percent uh, since last week's election when crypto friendly Donald Trump uh, taking the White House for a second time. Robin Hood says that election night was its biggest overnight session ever with 11 times its average volume for the year. Joining us right now in his first TV interview following the election results, Robin Hood co-founder and CEO Vlad Tanner. Vlad, it's great to see you this morning. Uh, we are watching, by the way, the price of Bitcoin uh, up at all time uh, highs here or practically all time highs, I should say. Can you explain to the viewer and, and everybody who I think is trying to make sense of this uh, what under under uh, President elect Trump we're going to see in the form of regulation that would result in prices like this and possibly even higher if you believe that's where this is all headed? Hey, good to see you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, we have seen basically what people are calling the Trump pump. So there's widespread optimism that the Trump administration, which is stated that they wish to embrace cryptocurrencies and make America the center of cryptocurrency innovation worldwide is going to have a, a much more forward looking policy towards this new industry. And I, I think what you're seeing is the market reacting to that. But, but how does that manifest itself? What does that actually look like in, in reality? Well, I, I think the, the hope is for, first of all, the approach that the SEC has taken over the past four years, which has been regulation by enforcement, not providing clear rules of the road for companies engaging in this new in industry, and in fact, just pursuing enfor enforcement cases, essentially um, you know, trying to stifle innovation, trying to stop these companies from operating in the U.S. That's pushed a lot of the really interesting innovation offshore, which which I think has been unfortunate. So I think um, the 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 idea is that we would see that stopping and hopefully some legislation. And now that Republicans have control over not just the executive branch, but Congress as well, that innovation uh, might might actually come through. And, and is that innovation you think related? I mean, we keep looking at Bitcoin as sort of a proxy for all of this, but I would think the true beneficiaries of this should be just about all of the other cryptocurrencies, if you will, and, and some of the other uh, crypto efforts, given that they're the ones that, you know, may turn out to be true currencies that you might use to, to buy a coffee, given that I'm not sure you're going to buy a coffee with Bitcoin, but maybe I'm wrong. I think that the potential is much more broad than that. I think that, you know, traders have viewed cryptocurrencies as uh, an asset to trade and a volatile asset. But if you look overseas, you're starting to see the hints of cryptocurrencies and the traditional financial system merge. So stablecoin ad adoption abroad has uh, overtaken Visa by some measures as sort of like uh, the largest uh, contributor to the blockchain transaction volumes. So you're starting to see stable coins take off and, and those are gonna continue to develop and evolve and become more useful. Uh, tokenization, which up until very recently, I don't think seemed feasible uh, in the US. I think now we can start having that conversation because you know Robinhood operates scaled businesses in both traditional finance with our equities and securities business and also cryptocurrencies. And we can see directly the benefits of this new technology because the cost savings and the efficiency and the value to customers in the form of user experience improvements like fractionalization and 24 hour trading is just undeniable. I mean, it costs us uh, roughly an order of magnitude less to operate a cryptocurrency business right. and offer uh, the exchange of assets than it does on the on the TradFi side. So I, I think that that advantage is undeniable. So we're seeing your stock, by the way, trading at about 30, 32, 20 now. How much do you think the run in your stock is a function of just more trading in crypto and more trading in the markets broadly versus I don't know when you start to think about tokenization, some of the other uh, businesses that you might ultimately be able to go in, frankly, if all of this uh, works out in your favor. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the stock price um, is nice and everything, but it's a it's a lagging indicator of all of the work that we've been putting in 
over the past few years to get to this position. I mean, just looking back in the past month, we had a big event in Miami, the Hood Summit. I think I, I spoke to you guys uh, yep. in the morning of that event. We announced three awesome new products, a new pro trader web platform, futures, index options trading. Then a week before the election, we rolled out another new product, presidential election contracts, allowing our traders to trade on the outcome of the election. That was incredibly successful. That traded over half a billion contracts in roughly a week. Um, and you know, you saw Robinhood kind of climbing the, the app store charts over the past few weeks. Now we're the number one finance app uh, in, in the US. And so I think that it's, it's a combination of innovation across a couple of different products and sectors. Of course, people are trading crypto, but they like our traditional equities offerings as well. You mentioned at the beginning, overnight trading on election night was the biggest in our history. Sunday night as well, just a couple of nights ago, was the third biggest overnight session we've had. So it's pretty amazing, I think, for me, because I remember the 2016 election. Robinhood was a young company, and uh, our, our traders, our investors, couldn't actually respond or take advantage of the election price moves. It was just in the futures markets. And now we've got four assets that allow... Uh, investors to capitalize on that activity round the clock. You've got futures. You also have 24-hour equity markets, cryptocurrencies, and presidential election markets. So I think the amount of innovation that we've delivered to retail, um, sometimes you know it's it's hard to to comprehend. But we're also not done. I think there there's a lot more work to do, and you know we're we're uh, we're working our way there.